Well, thanks, Amber. Yeah, Ole Miss had the opportunity to take down Alabama for the first time since 2015 on Saturday. Throughout the week, there was a lot of talk about the potential decline of Nick Saban's program, and the Rebels wanted to continue that narrative. Tuscaloosa is one of the toughest places to play in the country, and today was no exception. Lane Kiffin referencing the magnitude of the game throughout the week with multiple tweets regarding Taylor Swift's castles crumbling. Pete Golding and Kiffin returning to Brian Denny to crumble Alabama's season. We'll pick this one up in the opening frame. Jalen Milrow back under center for the Tide. The stats won't wow you, but Milrow made plays when he needed to on Saturday. The home side forced to settle for an opening drive field goal. However, Centurion Perkins had his way with Bama's offensive line after they hit midfield. Perkins was playing high school football for Raleigh just this time last year. Jackson Dart and the Rebels offense trying to answer on the ensuing drive. Dart with time, surveys and elects to run it in from 10 yards out to give Ole Miss a 7-3 advantage. The first half only saw three points scored from there on out. Will Rikers field goal midway through the second quarter, cutting the halftime deficit to a single point. Ole Miss entered the locker room off a missed field goal from just 34 yards out, and the momentum of the game shifted. Milrow and the Bama offense constructed back-to-back -back scoring drives to open the second half. The first, another Rikerd field goal, and then a 33-yard touchdown pass to Jalen Hale, which put the Tide in control. Jace McClellan also adding a score as Alabama downs Ole Miss, 24-10, the final. A really disappointing defeat for Lane Kiffin and Ole Miss. Lane Kiffin saying post game that he thought this was the best opportunity that he's ever had to defeat Nick Saban. And after the game, he shared more of those thoughts. A lot of credit to Alabama. Um, obviously, they battled through a lot this week, and a lot of people questioned them. And um, I thought they came out, played really physical, did a great job on defense, especially in the secondary. Really disappointed. Uh, and the result came near to win, and uh, didn't do that today. And wish we would hit that last pass there to get to one score with three timeouts and see what would happen there. But <clears throat> disappointing especially when you don't get these guys again, at least for a year. Um, so, more missed opportunities. I uh, just felt like we missed out on uh, big opportunities. Um, had some momentum shifts and weren't able to capitalize on them. And then, you know, when things didn't go our way, we weren't able to just weather the storm. And I thought that was the biggest thing in the second half. And now taking a peek at Alabama's next opponent in Mississippi State. They're traveling to Columbia to take on South Carolina tonight. One was a dogfight throughout the evening. South Carolina taking a 20 to 17 lead into the halftime break. And in the end, the Gamecocks pull it out. From Columbia, South Carolina to Jonesboro, Arkansas, Southern Miss hitting the road to take on Arkansas State. This game was wild in the first half. AK State ended up taking a 20 to 17 lead into the halftime break. Southern Miss coming all the way back to knock things up at 34 apiece. But in the end, Arkansas State getting the job done as the Red Wolves moving up their record at two and two. And that's a wrap from the big three in the week four college football slate. We'll have more tomorrow night, sights and sounds from around the country. But for now, here in Tuscaloosa, I'm Matt DiGregorio, WLOX News Now.